While you watch me work on an image for my Redbubble store, I want to share with you the most useful piece of advice I ever received. Advice I think would be helpful for anyone to consider, whatever your age or previous life experience. So to give some context, in my younger days I studied film. Nearing the end of the course, myself and many of my classmates had begun to look at opportunities outside of education, such as low paid freelance work, and even completely unpaid work experience. One of my teachers was very well versed in the world of freelance work, and he told us in simple terms that we needed to learn to value our time if we were taking these kinds of low paid or non paid opportunities. He didn't mean this in an abstract sense, he meant quite literally that we needed to put a cash value to our time per hour and use that to personally assess if opportunities were worth taking or not. The logic was as such. At any point, our time has a certain financial value per hour to an employer. The more experienced and trained and educated we are, the higher that per hour rate is likely to be. But even at the level we were at, as young people who had not finished our education, we still had a financial value that someone would pay us to provide. We could, for example, be working a minimum wage job at a fast food restaurant, and they would be paying us £8 an hour to work there. Therefore, any time we were not working a minimum wage job, it was losing us £8 an hour in revenue we could instead be earning there. So if we were offered a voluntary unpaid workplace position, such as on a film shoot, we had to decide if that opportunity was worth losing £8 an hour for. Let's say we volunteered 10 hours a week for work experience. That's £80 of unpaid work we would have turned down per week we did it. Three months of 10 hours a week work experience will require you to turn down at least £960 of paid work. That three months of work experience may easily be worth that money. Being offered a job opportunity from it or a good reference, and of course any training you gain from working there, could increase your earning potential and opportunities moving forwards massively. That £960 could be the best money you ever spent on your career. But it needs to be viewed through that lens. Unpaid work is not simply money that they are not paying you, it's money that you are sacrificing, or paying, to take on that opportunity. If someone therefore offers to pay you in exposure and shoutouts for helping them work on their tiny social media page, you need to consider how many people you could instead reach by just paying for an advert on that same social media website, as an example. If you are giving that influencer £300 of unpaid effort for them to, in exchange, give you maybe £30 worth of equivalent advertising, that's not a great deal. This really isn't to discourage anyone from taking on voluntary opportunities. Far from it. They can provide fantastic opportunities to develop yourself, help your local community, socialise and even travel the world. My point on this is simply that you need to be aware of what you are sacrificing in order to take on that unpaid opportunity. If someone were to say to you, would you like to pay us £1,000 to help with this, would you say yes or no to that question? Because that is what you are doing. And also think of the personal development opportunities that you would say yes to spending money on without a second's thought, and consider if maybe those are the ones you should prioritise. While this advice is primarily intended for job and career purposes, I personally feel it can be extended to your personal life very easily. Let's say you have a friend who asks you to help them move into new accommodation. You might provide them with 15 hours of assistance in doing so, much of it lifting heavy items. Now again, at the lowest rate, you've sacrificed, or paid, £120 in lost earnings for the opportunity to help your friend. Now, a good friendship is arguably priceless, and something to which no favour would be too much to ask, within reason. If, however, for this particular friend, you know that they would never do a similar favour in return for you, or wouldn't even provide you with a cheap pizza and a cold drink at the end of the move, despite being able to afford to do so, it might be that while you value that friendship with them at a value of at least £8 an hour, they might not value that friendship with you at all. Similarly with hobbies. I've spent 183 hours, at time of recording, playing the game Rocket League. Again, that's a minimum of £1400 in lost revenue that I've sacrificed to play this free game. Now, I've enjoyed the time I spent playing it, I've also used it as a way to maintain friendships and strengthen new ones. I don't regret the time I've spent with it. But I am also aware that a minimum of £1,400 of lost work hours would equal well over two years of gym membership costs. 
I could have also spent that 183 hours personally developing myself by visiting museums or reading. At an average reading pace, it apparently takes around 40 hours to read Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace. In those 183 hours I could have read War and Peace, the complete works of Shakespeare, Charles Dickens, Jane Austen, and every Sherlock Holmes story, and I still would have had around 30 hours to spare after reading all those classics. Those 30 remaining hours could have been spent listening to the entire recordings of The Beatles and Queen, with enough time left over to watch Citizen Kane, Gone with the Wind, and The Shawshank Redemption. And the saddest thing of all is, I'm still not that good at playing Rocket League. As I may have inadvertently demonstrated here, you could lose your mind calculating every hour that you are losing potential development time and earning potential. Life is not intended to be a constant grind for the maximum financial returns, and also, depending on your health and other commitments, your potential employment situation may be more complicated. The job in this context is only really there to act as a stand-in for productivity. The idea that there is something more personally productive that you could be doing instead of the task that you are actually doing. The purpose of this way of thinking is only to make you mindful of where you may be using your time inefficiently. Even in simple terms, if you go to see a film you dislike and it's two hours long, it not only costs you £10 for the ticket, but at least another £16 in lost time. You should therefore always think about if seeing a film is instead worth £26 for the ticket. Some very easily would be, some not. And all of this is calculated at the lowest official earning rate. Let's say you are a lawyer who can earn £200 per hour. Going to see a movie becomes quite the investment. This is incidentally why lawyers have assistants to fetch them coffee. A coffee would have to be pretty incredible to be worth a lawyer's hourly rate to wait in line for. The same with processing your own dry cleaning. It would almost be worth just buying new clothes instead if you had to take them and collect them yourself. The point of all of this is simply that your time is always valuable to someone. And your time and opportunities in life shouldn't be more valuable to a minimum wage employer than they are to you. Choose who to give your time to, and if you currently give it to people or activities that don't deserve it, you might be able to find alternatives that you would consider to be worth spending every last second of that valuable time on. And with that, I won't take up any more of your time. A link to my Redbubble is below if you want to check it for posters, prints, magnets and so on. I've also made a lot of other videos, including tutorials and some behind the scenes videos for bigger projects like colouring photographs of every US president. This video was a little different for the channel and I feel a little nervous about posting it. But if you enjoyed it, please let me know below in the comments. Also feel free to talk about advice that has made a big difference in your own life. While I hope it's not the case for this video, I do often find the comment section the most interesting part of YouTube. But whatever you do, thank you for watching.